You interested in getting some magic into your Minecraft game? Well, don't you go anywhere. This Minecraft magic episode is just for you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this first episode from me, Avamads, in Minecraft Magic. Now, you may be familiar with my series, Life on Minecraft, that talks about all of the animals and the plants and the mobs in Minecraft. This series is a bit like that. It talks about all the magic in Minecraft, specifically enchantments and potions, how you can get them, how you can make them, how you can find them, what they'll do for you, all that fantastic kind of stuff. Now, if you're a brand new player to Minecraft and you're interested in getting magic in your life, this is the perfect series for you. And if you're an experienced player, maybe I'll remind you of a few things that you've forgotten. Let's get on with it. Now, you can't just go into Minecraft and start doing magic. You've got to earn the right. And to do that, you've got to get some resources and create your magical setup. Let's talk about enchanting first. Now, you're going to need to get yourself some resources. First off, I'm really sorry, but you need to kill a few cows because you're looking for something that is going to be essential to be able to do this. And there it is, leather. The next thing you're going to want is this stuff over here. This is sugarcane. Get yourself some sugarcane. Don't do it with a sword. Interestingly, easier to cut down sugarcane with a slab of raw meat than it is to cut it with a sword, but we won't go into the details of that. There you go, you've got sugarcane. Then, with an ax, chop yourself down a tree. Doesn't matter what tree, but make it a fairly easy tree. So I'm gonna come along and chop down this little oak tree here. You've got all these items. Throw yourself down a crafting table and convert your wood into planks. And once you've got those planks, you'll be able to use those in a minute. Convert your sugar cane into paper by flicking them across in a row like that. And then you need to make yourself some books. So pop leather there, paper like that, and that will give you books. Now you need to get yourself a load of books. Another way to get books is to come to a village. And if you're lucky, you might find a library. Often you'll find a librarian inside the library. But what more specifically you'll find are these bookshelves. If you take just a normal ax to these bookshelves, you will get books back. If you take a silk touch pick to these shelves, you'll get actual bookshelves back. Let me demonstrate. So I'm just gonna take out this top bookshelf here with my normal ax. Let's just chop that out, bang, you can see you get a couple of books. But if I'm to use my silk touch pick here, and you might not have silk touch pick if it's the beginning of the game, I appreciate that, but just as an advantage, you actually get the bookshelf itself. Now we're gonna come onto bookshelves in just a second. Now let's assume you've not got silk touch, but if you want to come to your crafting table, you need 45 books and put 15 of those books into the middle there. And then get yourself 15 planks on each side here as well like that and they'll make you 15 bookshelves take those 15 bookshelves as a minimum and then you're going to need something else the next thing you're going to need to do is to come underground you can either dig through a load of caves like i have here to find this ravine or whatever else or you could branch mine down at about y11 because we're looking for those light blue stones just over there, the diamonds. Hopefully you've come armed with a bucket of water because also we're gonna to need to do something to this lava. Pop the water down, collect it back up again, come to the edge, pop the water down, collect it back up again, and that makes sufficient carpet of obsidian here to be able to get to these diamonds. Now, fingers crossed, you need five diamonds if you're walking around with an iron pick five diamonds so let's have a go fingers crossed on this front there's one there's two there's oh we've done it we've done it we got lucky five let's just get it out of the way as well right so we've got five diamonds that's fantastic now hopefully unlike me you would have come with a stick as well two sticks later and we are good to go into your crafting table and make yourself a diamond pick. It has to be a diamond pick. I'm sorry, your iron pick just isn't good enough at this time. Now, we're gonna play around with this obsidian now. Knock out a stone block next to the obsidian there, like that. Pop in your water bucket. This is actually quite important if you wanna do this to maximum effect. And then, you've gotta pound this obsidian as hard as you can, and it's gonna take a while with your diamond pick. It takes a while to break, because obsidian, apart from bedrock, is probably the hardest thing in the game. 
and you want to get four obsidian blocks at least. Maybe take a few spares because they're always quite handy to have, but at least four. You saw there that the obsidian didn't get destroyed by the lava underneath the obsidian block because the lava pool that we poured this water on is deeper than just one block. The water turns it into more obsidian, which means you don't waste an obsidian block in the lava. There we go, four blocks of obsidian. Time to get back up to our base. But before we go, I did say that everything we needed was here. And I also mean this blue stuff. This is lapis lazuli. And if I come up to it here and get my pick, I'd like to get this too, because this stuff is equally important in the magic game as is the obsidian and the diamonds. So now we can go back upstairs. We're back up top and in this chest we've got all the bits we've just made. We've got our obsidian, we've got our diamonds, we've got the 15 bookshelves that we made a little while ago and we've also got an extra book. If you didn't have enough books to make an extra book then go and hit some more sugarcane, go and whack another cow, make yourself just one more book at least for the time being. Pull those out, come into a crafting table, put an obsidian in an upside down t-shape in the two holes put the diamonds and put a book at the top. That is an enchanting table and frankly you can't enchant without it. So we now have our enchanting table. Pop it down where it is you want to do your enchanting. Now I suspect it will not be in an open field like this. Probably not the most sensible thing in the world. It will be in a nice house or a cave base. Pop the enchanting table down and you need to surround it with at least 15 bookshelves. And what's really important is that there is an airspace between the enchanting table and the bookshelf like this. You can see there, you can walk through it. Don't put carpet there, don't put a fence there. You need that space. And you just saw there, you've got some little glyphs coming across from that bookshelf into the enchanting table. Now you need 15 of these bookshelves to give the enchanting table the maximum amount power that you want for the biggest enchantments. Now it will work now. We could click into that and we could enchant stuff now but if we put 15 bookshelves around it it will work much better. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Leave yourself a little gap that you can walk through. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen and 15. Now that is the smallest enchanting setup you can have to have the maximum enchanting power. If you want to of course you could fill it out all the way around and make loads of books but that really doesn't make it any stronger. Now I'm just going to introduce to you now the method of enchanting. To enchant you need two things some lapis lazuli or lazuli if you want to say it wrongly and whatever it is you want to enchant. That could be swords, it could be other weapons, it could be axes, picks, it could be armor, it could even be books and we'll talk about that in a moment. But come into your enchanting table. You see you've got two open slots in the graphic using interface or GUI. Where it's got a little lapis outline, put your lapis in there. That's like the fuel for this enchanting table, a bit like that you have to put petrol in a car. Then get the item that you want to enchant. Now be sure that you're ready to enchant this because as soon as you put it in the enchanting table, that is going to be set with the enchantments that you can take it. So if you take it out and put it back in again, you'll always get the same enchantment choices. So pop it in there and you get three choices. Assuming you are maximum powered and you have at least 30 experience levels. These numbers here are the numbers of experience levels you need in your hot bar, you see I've got 34 right there. So if you've only got eight levels of experience, these two will be grayed out. And you get to choose what you're gonna do. So this one here, it gives you a clue. I'm breaking one and maybe something else. Smite two and maybe something else. Looting two and maybe something else. Generally speaking, the higher the level, the better the enchantment. Now we'll talk about what each enchantment does for you throughout the series, but let's just go for this big one here because it's the nicest one. We'll click on that and it goes, you'll get an advancement of enchanter and then you can pick up your sword. Now we got lucky, we got two enchantments on that sword for the price of one, but it doesn't mean that you'll do that every time. You'll notice because we went for level three, it has consumed three pieces of lapis. 
You will also notice that it has consumed three levels of experience. I'm now on 31, I was on 34. So you have to continuously top up your experience to be able to do lots of enchanting. It's kind of part of the fun of the game. I did mention that you can also enchant books, just a standard book what we made with one piece of leather and three pieces of paper. Pop it in there and you get the choice of a level one, a level two, or a level three uh, book. Now if I take that out and put it back in again, they're the same. You don't get to chop and choose until you're happy. And again, you can choose if you really want feather falling, that's a bargain, it's only eight. Then you've got level two at power two or protection three. I'm gonna click that one and I've now got a protection three enchanted book. So Avamance, I've got my magic book. How do I make some magic armor or some magic something with it? Well, dead easy, you need an anvil to apply a magic book. So pop three bits of iron across there, four iron ingots there, so it's quite a lot of iron. Each one of these is nine, so that's nine, 18, 27, 31 pieces of iron. Take out your anvil and pop your anvil down on the floor. It makes a lovely, satisfying dong sound. If you then come in here and you get your enchanted book, and put it in the second slot and you're enchanted whatever it is you want to make enchanted into the first slot that will apply that book to that item you now have a protection three diamond chest plate you can add additional books to the same item and get multiple enchantments to make some really serious god armor or god weapons now, if you thought setting an enchantment table set up was difficult, you wait till you have a go at the potions. It is proper tricky. You need 10 obsidian and four cobblestone. Now, it doesn't have to be cobblestone, but I use cobblestone because it saves on obsidian and it looks all right when you put it into the four corners. But you're gonna make another portal, two across, three down in that space there. You then need to get yourself a flint and steel. And the way you craft the flint and steel is unsurprisingly, one piece of steel, well, iron, and one piece of flint. Get yourself your flint and steel into your crafting table. One flint and steel. You then, three iron picks, I would say at least, or a couple of diamonds. You want your sword, you want some armor, you want some blocking blocks. Cobble's really good because it doesn't catch fire. You want some food, and then you want six pieces of wood and one piece of iron. And that one piece of iron and six pieces of wood could be the difference between your life and not, because it makes a shield. Shields are awesome in the nether, especially where we're going. And then grab yourself a number of torches and away you go. So we're gonna go into the nether. Right click on the nether portal with your flint and steel. That opens it up. I recommend you taking 10 obsidian with you into the nether, just in case the portal gets damaged on the other side. And definitely, definitely take your flint and steel so you can light it up. Now let's go through. So we have come through and we have hit absolute payload here. I have literally come into a fortress. Now, ordinarily, you would have to go searching for one of these puppies, possibly traveling a hundred or more blocks, uh, several hundred blocks, in fact, sometimes. But just check around. We've got nothing lurking around here. But now we need to get ourselves some stuff that you need to fight your way for. Now, I've gone into survival for this bit just for the, the lulls of it. And we're gonna approach this little box here. And if you can see right there, you can see there is a box uh, right in front of us up some stairs. Now get your shield in your off hand, which is there. And that means whenever you have something thrown at you, which you will, you can hold the right but right mouse button and that will put the shield in front of you. And that will help you at least get some defense. Get your sword in your other hand and we need to approach this spawner, listening out for those noises, did you hear that? So as we can get ourselves some blaze rods. This is a blaze spawner, and we've basically got to come and beat the blazes up as much as we possibly can and get blaze rods, hopefully, fairly quickly. I'm waiting for this spawner to give us another go. It will spawn blazes fairly regularly even when you are right on top of it. So we've got two blazes coming down here. So you've got to be very careful because if they set fire to you, you are gonna lose hearts left, right and center. And we need a minimum of two blaze rods, ideally more. And we've got three there, which is superb. So let's get ourselves back through after eating some food to try and get some of those hearts back. 
When you travel far enough away from the spawner, it will stop working and we can go back to our house. Well, it's more of a field really. Now we've come back to our base because we need to heal up. We are gonna to have to go back to the nether in a moment to get something else, but at the moment we can just crack on with this. So take the shield out of your hand because it gets in the way and then come in here, get three bits of cobble and one of your blaze rods. That is gonna make you a brewing stand, which is exactly what you need to start brewing potions. And if you have a magic set up, I recommend actually that you just pop it right next to your enchanting table, right there. And you can click into the brewing stand very easily. You can see you've got one area here that is your fuel, three here, which is your collection bottles, and here, which is your ingredient. What you also need to do is come and put a blaze rod and get some blaze rod powder. One blaze rod gives you two blaze powder. Pop that into the fuel of your brewing stand. Now, if you come out, it will stay there. You can see the brewing stand is now bubbling away. We have got a full load of fuel just there, but we need some things to be able to make it work. For the next step, get yourself a furnace because we need to turn this sand into glass. Put the sand at the top, you need at least nine really at this point and get yourself a couple of bits of charcoal or coal or whatever other fuel you may have available to you. That is gonna smell up into nine different blocks, nine blocks of glass like that. We'll let that go because at the same time, we are going to create ourselves an infinite water source. Dig yourself a trench that's three wide Put one bucket of water at one end and one bucket of water at the other end. So that's two buckets of water. You may at this stage, if you wish, if you're a little bit worried that you might mess it up, put yourself a slab and waterlog the slab at that end and waterlog the slab at that end. That will mean you can only take water from the middle and that will always remain a infinite water source for you to be able to fill up the bottles that you're gonna be making in just a moment. If we come back over to the furnace we should have at least three yet so if we take three of those and we go into the crafting table one two three and you've got yourself three glass bottles keep going until you've got plenty of bottles but you need at least three come to your infinite water source and fill up one two and three if you just right click on those and they'll fill up beautifully notice that empty bottles stack four bottles do not and put that that and that in the bottom. Now all we need is an ingredient and I'm afraid we've got to go back through there. Come down to the floor underneath the nether fortress and you'll find this great brown stuff here. Watch out for them though because they probably won't be your friend and you want to dig out about I don't know 12 to 15 of these. 12 is probably plenty and that will act as the perfect dirt for you to be able to cultivate more potion brewing ingredient without having to keep coming back to the nether. Because frankly, coming back to the nether can be quite scary. Now, now you've got your dozen soul sand, get yourself back into the fortress because in there, there is a room that has got a little mushroom-like plant that you might find important. Now you have searched this fortress and you have found this amazing room down here. This is nether wart and nether wart is what allows you to make potions. You should see that there is three different stages. You can see this little baby stage, this little middle stage and this big boy stage here. So if you whack out the big ones, you'll get more nether wart back than you actually knocked out. So I've got six for the price of two. Whereas, so I've got four in my hand there. If I knock out this smaller one here, you'll see and just get one. You've got to wait for it to be fully, fully grown before you can properly harvest it. So I always recommend you refill in any of the ones you take because you never know when you want to come back and actually have um, sufficient uh, nether wart to be able to harvest again. But you want to come and have as many bits of nether wart in your hand as you have got um, nether rack that you're going to use. You remember you dug out those 12 nether racks, so you've got 12 bits of nether wart. And now you can go back home. So you've got your soul sand and you've got your nether wart and you've come back to the overworld and you're ready to roll. Now get your dozen or so soul sand, however many it was you got, and lay them out in a two wide row like this. So two by six if you did indeed get 12. And on top of that, plant your nether wart on top like this. Now make sure you keep back at least one bit because you're gonna do some potion making with it. Now come along and get your nether wart. Now what we're gonna make is our first potion. And this is the potion that starts off almost 
every other potion and that's called the awkward potion it has absolutely zero effect but it's like a base so pop your nether wart in there and you'll see the bubbles start to brew up make sure you've always got three bottles even if you only need one always put in three because it costs one bit of nether wart whether you put one two or three bottles in the bottom it takes a little while to be able to do this but at the end you'll hear like a blob 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 sound here it comes glug 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 and you have an awkward potion and that awkward potion is the base for magic you are now set up to do all kinds of minecraft magic you've got your enchantment set up you've got your potion set up nobody is going to stop you from being the sorceress supreme our nether wall is growing fine on the side so we will have an endless supply of awkward potion now the next few episodes we're going to go into some of the details of the enchantments and the potions that you can make in minecraft where you find them what ingredients you need what they will do for you so you will be absolutely knowledgeable as a master sorcerer if you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it, and I will keep on making them. And also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.